Hello everyone, my name is Nasli and welcome to or back to my channel. So today I will be filming the bookish Christmas tag. The first one is Father Christmas. Name the book that you received as a child that you treasure to this day. Okay, and that book is Kenzie's Keys Kingdom by Michael Morpurgo. I absolutely adore this book. This is one of the books that got me first into reading and this book follows a boy named Michael and one day him and his family go off in their boat onto the open sea. A storm happens and Michael gets washed away and he ends up on an island that is then known as Kenzuki's Kingdom and it follows Michael and his adventures with Kenzuki and also on his journey to try and get back home and reunited with his family. I absolutely adore this book. Like I said, it first got me into reading and I have treasured it ever since. Next up, we have The Ghost of Christmas Past. Is there a book or series you like to revisit each year at Christmas time? And the answer here, yes there is. Every single year on Christmas Eve, I read A Christmas Carol. This one is quite an old version, it's from 1948. And I absolutely love A Christmas Carol. It's one of my favourite Christmas books. Again, I reread it every year and I adore it. In fact, the reason I have this copy is because I collect different editions of A Christmas Carol. Next up, we have A Christmas Tree. Name a series that reaches new heights with every entry. Ooh. Okay, so I don't know if I'm technically cheating with this one because I haven't finished the series yet. I still have to read the very last book. But for the first and second book, certainly, I'm going to go with The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is called the Winter Night Trilogy, I believe. And I absolutely adore this series so much it's also a very very wintry read so if you read it this is the perfect time to do so in fact um the last book is called the winter of the witch so absolutely perfect and this book follows our main character vashia this book follows her through her infancy to her young adult years and it's a fantasy novel and it follows vashia as she grows up as she deals with the fact her father has remarried into a woman who does not understand her family's customs and her and the folklore that comes with it and this book was inspired by russian folklore and folk fairy tales so a lot of the references in there will be very very familiar if you know a lot about russian folklore Another point of Vashia is that she can actually see the gods that her people worship and the fairy folk that her people worship but again when this stepmother comes in who does not agree with this stuff she also brings with her Christianity and in that way the gods that they follow then become endangered and this is where Vashia's story starts trying to save and salvage her people's culture and the gods themselves. Next up we have friends and family. Name a book with fantastic characters. Okay so for this one I'm gonna have to go with a book. I have lost count how many times I have reread this and that is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I absolutely love this book. When I say love I mean love. I own multiple copies of it. The TV series, on as a side note, that they've created and that the series 2 is coming out is also phenomenal. But yeah, each character in this is well fleshed out. I love them. I love our two kind of main characters, Crowley and Aziraphale. They are definitely the main ones in this that everyone knows and loves. But all the characters in this are so wild, so fantastic and so nutty and it's brilliant. Decorations. Name a book with a gorgeous cover you would proudly display on your shelves. Okay, so I've actually gone for two books with this. They're very different. So I've got the first one is this edition of The Wind in the Willows. I love how classic this book looks. 
I think it looks like this because at one point there was a dust jacket but by the time it got to me then the dust jackets disappeared. I just want to state if you've watched one of my previous videos I was not the culprit of this book's dust jacket being thrown away. I want to make that abundantly clear. I got this from a charity shop a few years ago and it came without a dust jacket but yeah I love the gold foiling on it and I love the two-toned here and the fact that the gold foiling all along this bit goes around and it's just a beautiful book and as I said it looks like a classic book. The next book I've got here is um gorgeous like it's not got anything underneath but the dust jacket is absolutely stunning and this is The Sisters of the Winter Wood by Rena Rosner and I've not actually read this book before, so this is on my TBR. But this follows two sisters in a small village, and I think by the sounds of things it has something to do with shape-shifting and the sisters holding a magic, and I think one sister loves the magic and can't wait to start learning and using it, while the other sister's quite afraid of it. I don't hold me to that though, because I do not remember what this book is about. Next up is Christmas cards. Name a book that carries a great message. So for this one I'm going to go with The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta and this is a book that's written in verse and this book follows our main character Michael and it follows his journey from being a young black boy in England coming to terms that he is gay and then finding out in college that he absolutely loves to dress in drag and loves performing in drag and it's just got a great message of you know finding yourself following the things that you love regardless of others opinions and regardless of your family's opinions of it and I don't know I just I'm sorry it's very reflective but this is a book I loved and I think I read it in a day, maybe two days. It didn't take me long at all and I highly, highly recommend it. Next up we have Ice and Snow. Name a book that you were hoping to love but which utterly left you cold. Now as a rule, books that I don't envision myself rereading or books that I don't love, I don't keep, I get rid of them. So I'm trying to think there is one that comes to mind and I was really hoping to love this book now thankfully I got it out from the library so I didn't waste any money on it but this is a book of short stories and it's called Squirrel Seeks Chipmunk and I thought oh it sounds really odd it sounds like you know like animals like animals having human traits and being humanized and like talking and interacting and stuff it sounds amazing it was not. When I say this book left me feeling physically sick, I think I ended up giving this book a two, maybe a one star. I hated it. I read it all, but I hated it. Next up we have Christmas Lunch. Name a book that was big and intimidating, but also worth it in the end. Okay, so I just want to state beforehand, I didn't physically read this. I listened to it on audiobook. But the book I'm going with is going to be the Sherlock Holmes collection. This book alone has all the Sherlock stories and it is 1077 pages. Oh, I filmed a video of the 1001 books tag. I could have used this in it and I didn't. Oh well, you, you know about it now. But yeah, I have listened to the entirety of the Sherlock Holmes stories and I absolutely love and adore them. I listened to it, as I said, on audiobook. The narrator was Stephen Fry and he was amazing. I love Stephen Fry, I think he's fantastic. But yeah, so Sherlock Holmes. I think the audiobook in its entirety is about 23 hours long, maybe a bit longer than that actually. Um, so it took me months to listen to it. 
but again it was oh so worth it and I loved the experience and I loved every minute of it. Mince pies, name book you found sweet and satisfying. Okay technically this isn't one book it's an entire series but I am going to go with Heartstopper. If you haven't picked this book series up yet please do it's a graphic novel series and it's just so wonderful and so sweet. Obviously um, the later books do have some trigger warnings so please do look into those if you have any triggers but I love this series so much. So this follows our two main characters Nick and Charlie and it's a male male romance and it follows them as they navigate high school in England and as they just grow close together and start to fall in love and it's their romance story and I love every bit of it. I haven't read volume 4 yet so there are 4 volumes that are currently out and I can't wait to read it. It's on my TBR. Oh I don't know if you can see it but this series is by Alice Oseman. Next up we have presents. What book do you wish you could give everyone to read? Ooh. Okay so I've got a list of books here that I want everyone to read. Um, some books I know are very divided and people either love them or hate them but I'd want everyone to give it a go. So I'm gonna list. Okay so I've got five that I want to recommend to people. Again some of these are 50-50, some of these are quite popular so I'm sure a lot of people have already read them but the five are the Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, The Toy Makers by Robert Dinsdale, The Adventures of a Hundred Year Old Man by John Jonas, and With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I do not have a list of people to tag, so if you're seeing this video, I tag you. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please leave a like, subscribe if this seems like content you will enjoy and finally down below why don't you leave one book you would like to recommend and want everybody to read. Other than that I will see you again soon, bye!